At News, we constantly strive to bring to you things from the government, things from the policy side, things may, that may affect you in your business and your, in your day-to-day -day lives. Coal is a political hot potato. We are here to speak with Mr. Anil Swaroop, who is going to tell us how difficult it has been for him to achieve the kind of numbers that he managed to do as far as the auction is concerned. He will also tell us that commercial mining will soon start. While seven blocks have already started, the rest of the blocks will be operational in a month or so. Good morning and welcome to this news special. Today we have Anil Soru, Coal Secretary. Sir, first of all, let us congratulate you for a phenomenal success of the coal block allocations because um, it's always been a political hot potato. When you first undertook this whole project of auction for uh, coal blocks, how did it feel like? Oh, it was tough to begin with, I must confess. But as we went along, I think it eased out a bit. Uh, I have been blessed with a very, 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 very uh, convincing team, a team which is very committed. And that helped matters. Like I said, it was always a political hot potato. First, the whole uh, CAG report came and it said that the nation lost uh, a huge amount of money because of coal blocks not being auctioned. Then the whole question of uh, allocation of uh, natural resources uh, not being specifically for the purpose of monetization. Amidst all these pressures, the, the center was under pressure to you know, generate a certain amount of money. Uh, were you uh, under a lot of pressure uh, to start with? And then what gave you the conviction to go on and ensure that the results are beyond expectation. I think the pressure, there was no external pressure per se on, on what we were trying to do. And most of it was internal because we are up against a particular timeline. Supreme Court had cancelled 204 blocks, 42 of which were already uh, being mined. So we were under pressure in this sense that we had to do something about these 42 blocks so that mining continued even thereafter. That was a bit of a pressure. Second, of course, the we were working in the backdrop of all these scams that had happened, all the troubles that there had been with the coal auctions, or sorry, coal allocation, and devising an absolutely new strategy for coal auctions where everyone was actually peering down, they were, they were looking at you, with, at you with a microscope very closely at what you were doing. So we were under a lot of uh, pressure in that sense. But otherwise, within, within uh, I think, uh, we, we could work out a strategy that ultimately worked. But the sector has also seen a lot of corporate one-upmanship in the past and the corporates in the sector keep fighting each other. Does that also come out as a pressure while you are you know, putting systems in place for auctions? No, I don't think uh, we were really bothered about what was happening in the corporate sector per se. We were really focused on the processes uh, and that, that's what we did. We were working on first the processes, then the use of technology in terms of making the whole process transparent. Once that happened, we were very sure that uh, whatever happens otherwise, the auctions will go through. But few industrial houses have come to the extent of saying that the government was a bit unfair to them. It's a democracy. People can have a point of view and should have a point of view. Uh, but I think uh, we have been reasonably fair to almost everyone who participated in the auction. Uh, some win, some don't. Uh, and some of those that don't win probably will have this common to offer. But by and large, we are fairly satisfied with the way the auctions happened. Uh, what's the road ahead like? People are saying that despite uh, the auction itself uh, per se being very successful, the production has not uh, picked up yet. No, production has started. In seven of the mines, production has started. More than two million tons of coal has been produced. And rest of them, the, uh, there are some issues local, at local level. Central government has given all the clearances. Now we are in touch with the state governments. And we are hopeful that in month, month and a half, the rest of the mines, especially scheduled two mines that were already being mined, will start mining all over again. It's a very complicated process, sir. 41 clearances required, I mean, that's, the, that, that's what I at least read from your interview itself, uh, given to another channel. Uh, how, how do you intend to go about it? You've got uh, you know, states involved, you've got a lot of vested interests involved. How do you intend to... You know, mining in any case is a very sensitive issue. There are people who are opposed to mining per se, including coal mining. Hence, there are indeed clearances required and some of them are very valid ones because we have to take care of the environment. So we have to go through that process and that is why it is a bit time consuming. But having said that, I think most of the clearances have come through. Now only the last mile is left to be uh, travelled. And that should also happen in, the, in due course. Uh, what are the uh, production targets sir, that you have given to yourself? Uh, production target for coal India. India. Production target for the current financial year is 550 million tonnes, which is an increase of more than 11% of the previous year. And in this context, I'd like to tell you that coal India generally has been uh, growing at, the, at the, any, anywhere between 1 and 3%. It was only last year that it grew uh, much more than previous years. 
Last year, the production was 32 million tons more than the previous year, which is more than the cumulative increase in the previous four years. And over and above what we did last year, which was a record production, this year we've gone ahead with 550 million ton target. So the target is very ambitious, but in the first few months, whatever has happened has given us the belief that we should be able to achieve the target. In the first quarter, the growth has been 12.3%. So it's quite a phenomenal growth. Uh, there was a lot of problem with regard to coal last year at this point in time. Today, uh, there is no such problem. Most of the power uh, uh, utilities are sitting with coal for more than 20 days inventory. So they, they are sitting on 30 million tons of coal. So coal per se uh, has ceased to be or more of more, uh, I, I, how I should put it, I think coal has ceased to be an issue as far as the generation of power is concerned, at least at this point in time. Uh, you've also given yourself a target of a billion uh, ton of coal production by 2022. Isn't that a bit ambitious? You have to be ambitious if you want to grow, no? Uh, we have worked out a very detailed plan. And whatever has happened in the past few months gives us the belief that we should be able to achieve 1 billion tons. This plan is a very elaborate one. We've touched upon, and this plan has been worked out on the basis of the details of each mine. It is not a target given from the top. And that is why so far the planning has been for about 908 million tons. We are still working uh, and hopefully we should be able to work out a plan for 1 billion ton. This has happened because we have worked out a detailed plan of each mine. What it takes to reach from level X to level Y, which includes environment, forest clearance, land acquisition, human resources, technology upgradation, evacuation. All these aspects have been looked into with regard to each of the mines so as to see that not only coal gets produced, but it reaches uh, the place where it has to be used. Talking of power, sir, I mean, uh, with such high uh, companies have paid a very uh, uh, huge premium to acquire uh, coal blocks. With companies having paid such premium, how do you, you know, intend to keep power prices in check? You know, the whole auction was conducted in a manner that the tariffs don't go up. And that is why we had reverse auction in, in case of uh, power projects. In non-power projects, we had the usual forward uh, uh, bidding. But here, in case of power sector, it was reverse bidding and they had to bid on, so to say, on tariff. In the sense that the, the price of coal had to be reverse bid and as the price of coal went down in the bidding process, the factoring of this coal price would reduce the tariffs. That's how it was worked out. Uh, so also, sir, there are, there are fears that the nation might fee, uh, face some kind of a shortage arising out of you know, fall of imports, also in back, you know, backdrop of um, Mr. Gautam Adani's coal blocks getting cancelled in Australia. Do you think it's a concern? No, see, imports are under OGL. So, Whenever there is a shortage of coal in this country, they will be imported. They have been imported in the past. Last year, almost 200 million tons of coal was imported. So per se, import will not be a problem. Uh, I would not call it a problem. Uh, what has happened is, as a consequence of the increase in production of coal, the imports have come down. That's the indication. So it's, it's nothing to do with not being able to import. The issue is, if the same quality of coal is available, and it's, it's, it's tragic. India is sitting on 3 billion, 300 billion tons of coal. And we are still importing coal. So what we are trying to arrive at a situation where the quality of coal that is available in India is not imported. And that's how what, what we are aiming at. And the indications in the, in the past couple of months has been that the coal imports are coming down. And we are hopeful that they will come down further. So when you talk of Anil Swarup, the bureaucrat, people who know you uh, say that you are not uh, you know, talking of Anil Swarup, the bureaucrat, you are talking of Anil Swarup, the CEO. You, uh, you know, you, you've always believed in setting up systems in place like the PMG that you set up. Uh, don't you think dealing with Indian bureaucracy with uh, uh, you know, such an aggressive approach is a bit tedious? No, I think there are many more aggressive bureaucrats who, want, who are doing a lot of good work. They don't get to be known in the media. Uh, I am probably interacting more with the media. They aren't. Uh, there are some outstanding, wonderful officers. Whatever has been, happened here in coal ministry is not because of Mr. Anil Saru. It has happened because of the team that I have. Outstanding officers. So, and they're pretty aggressive. They want to get things done. So that is how it happens. I mean, bureaucracy or the people therein are also part of this society. You have some good, so you have some bad. Unfortunate thing is some of the not so good bureaucrats gets to, get to be known in the media. There are some better bureaucrats and I'm sure you're going to interview more of them and find out how well the bureaucracy is doing. Why don't you share more with us about your experience of setting up the PMG? PMG was a very interesting uh, experience uh, because uh, it, was, it was a clean slate given to me. Investments were not moving, clearances were not moving in investments. So I was asked to head this group called Project Monitoring Group. And the idea of this group was to fast track clearances. So what we did was we set up a portal wherein industry could go and 
indicate the problem and the system, the back end system was such that this problem flowed automatically to a designated joint secretary of the ministry. And he was mandated to give his comments on the portal which were visible to the industry. Thereafter, we set up subgroups comprising the concerned ministry which was creating the problem and a sponsoring ministry plus the industry. And we used to sit, sit every week with designated ministries, discuss and find solutions to the problem and expedite issues. And the minutes of these meetings were uploaded directly onto the portal. So what had happened was that over a period of time, I think around 6 lakh crores worth of projects were cleared. And when people ask me, how did this happen? In fact, it's transparency that did it. And the bottom line was that no matter how inefficient I am, to the world I'd like to be efficient. So all the inefficiencies of some of the uh, bureaucrats got displayed on the web portal in the sense of they are not taking a decision and probably they then expedited it. The second important, I think, component of what we did in the project monitoring group was our visits to the states. Normally and typically, when there is a problem with the state, you call the officer or officers of the state to, this, to Delhi and discuss with them. We, we turned it totally around. We said the project monitoring group team used to visit the state, sit with the chief secretary, sit with the senior officers of the state government, and even the district magistrates and collectors, and go through each of the issues. And it was not a one-off one meeting. Every once in two months, we were in a state. I was traveling every Monday and Friday to a state. And that really helped matters because we could convey a value proposition to the state governments. When I took over as coal secretary, in fact, that experience of PMG has really helped. Some of the job that has been done here is similar to the one that we did in PMG. We set up a coal project monitoring portal here where all the blocks related issues are there on the portal. We travel to the state, sit with the chief secretary and senior officers and sort things out. And one reason why coal production has gone up is on account of massive amount of land acquisition that has happened. Not many people know that more than 2,000 hectares of land was acquired by Coal India and 41 environment clearances were given. Now, all this entailed a lot of activity from the state's point of view. So, what we did was when we went to the state, we could convey a value proposition to them that if these get cleared and coal gets mined, apart from, the, uh, apart from coal India benefiting, state government gets royalty, they get paid. So, it's a win-win situation for everyone. And we could manage to convey this win-win proposition to the stakeholders and that's why things happened. So a lot of people are trying to convey the win-win proposition in GST or in many other things, but in Core India you were successful. So what's the mantra? No, the mantra is that you have to evolve a saleable proposition where people buy your idea. And then you have to sit with them and convince them. You can't call them to Delhi and discuss with them. You have to go down. When you, when you market a product, what do you do? You go down to the consumer sit with them and convince them that the, consumer, the product would be useful to them. It is a value proposition to them. It happens with ideas also. If you can go to the states, sit with them and discuss, some may not agree, but majority will agree. And then you have that critical mass where others also wear in and others also f f fall in line and do the same things that you want them to do. So one idea that was floated by the previous government for cutting the flab of uh, Coal India was to demerge the various subsidiaries into separate uh, profit centers uh, on their own. Do you think something like that is in the I, I, you know, I, I have discussed this, but I don't see any uh, proposition. I don't understand how it will benefit Coal India or how it will benefit coal production. To me, I think that's not the basic problem with Coal India. You have to have an overarching organization like Coal India, which can take issues which are common to everybody and it results in a lot of cost saving. So I think the structure per se doesn't require much of a change. What is required is making it more effective, making it more efficient. These are the aspects that we are looking into. Bringing in new technology, working out evacuation, these are the aspects that really needs to be done. And what, what is actually already happening is that we are engaging with such agencies which can add further value. For example, Coal India has entered into MOUs with the railways and the state governments for setting up joint ventures in the states of Odisha, in the states of Jharkhand, so as to set up their evacuation project. For railways, these projects are very small projects. But for these SPVs, they will be totally focused on getting these projects moving as quickly as possible so that the coal can be evacuated. There are many such, more such examples where Coal India, as, as, as an overarching body, has played a very, or is, continues to play a very important role in terms of adding value. So you really have a lot on your plate and thank you very much for talking to you. That was Mr. Anil Swaroop, the man behind a successful coal auction, the man who got lakhs of crores to the exchequer. We wish him all the best and you will keep following whatever coal India is doing.